deeply honored to be asked to share um, a story from my life during Black History Month. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, I am not black. <laughs> I know. And, um, and I just want to acknowledge that we all are the black history in this country and the black experience in this country, regardless of our color. So um, I'll start my story. Actually, I remember when this was. This was 18 years ago. I was, I was giving blood to be tested to donate an organ. Some of you may know that story. That's a different story. But as uh, I was donating blood, the nurse that was, or the phlebotomist, I guess, the nurse who was taking the, the blood, um, she looked at my record and she said, Lee Caps, we have another patient named Caps. And I said, Cheryl? And she said, yes. And then she got this quizzical look on her face. And for those of you who I don't know that well, my wife Cheryl is, is African American. She is black. Um, and she got a physical look on her face and said, could I ask you a personal question? And I said, sure. She said, why did you choose a black woman to be your wife? And I mean, she was totally curious, right? There was nothing, it was just absolute curiosity. And I said, you know, I don't feel like I chose a black woman. I feel like I fell in love with my wife and she was black. But there was nothing that in my sort of frame of reference that said that was a problem. So we just took the next step together. So it wasn't that I wasn't I wasn't trawling for black women, just so you know, <laughs> she was black and I didn't see anything wrong with that. And so that's sort of the, the starting point because Cheryl and I met um, in 1973. And uh, I did pretty much fall in love with her at first sight. And, um, and we ended up becoming a couple. And of course, I had to introduce that to my family. And my father, I knew was going to be a problem. My mother, I didn't really expect there to be a problem. And, and for my mother, she, when I said, I'm seeing a woman, she's, she's black. My mother was like, uh huh, and 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 um, and my father. When I let him know, I said, Dad, it's, you know, I'm, I'm seeing a woman, and he was like, Oh, that's good, that's good. I said, yeah, she's she's five years older than me, and he was like, Oh, because I was in my mid twenties, and, and I said, Yeah, she's divorced. <gasps> oh, son, and I said. Yeah, she's got a little girl. And, I, and he was like, oh, this. And I thought, okay, that's enough. <laughs> we'll, we'll wait for another conversation. And, and, and so, the, of course, there was another conversation. I said, you know what? I, I didn't really mention it. She's black. And, and it was, if any of you remember the old Red Fox show, it was like, oh, this is the big one. <laughs> And, um, and he did not, literally did not communicate with me for three or four months. He would not communicate with three or four months. He didn't know what to do with this fact. I wrote him a letter. I said, you know, Dad, I'm here. I want, got nothing. So I did manage to have dinner at my parents' house after a few months. Not with Cheryl, but just on my own. And it was in the fall. And my mother, in this very sort of frosty triad, my mother said, um, I just want you all to know that I'm inviting Lee and Cheryl to Thanksgiving dinner. And she turned to my father and said, and you're invited if you'd like to come. <laughs> and so the frost began to melt. He became civil. He you know, made an effort, uh, as did she, because as you might imagine, you black folks in the audience, there was some risk for her in this. And, um, and then we decided we were going to get married. Oh! <laughs> and it was like a repeat. He, he grew apart, and then he got used to the idea, and he came back together. And the big one was, we're going to have a baby. And, and that was very tough for him. 
he just didn't know. His story was, this will be very hard for the child. And I said, I said, you know, you have something to do with how hard it's going to be for the child. <laughs> I mean, you can choose how hard it's going to be for the child. So he did not see my son Neil until he was three months old. And it was by mistake. We happened to be at my mom's house for lunch, and we had the baby, and he happened to come home by mistake, and there was kind of this, you know, I could see what was going on in his head. It was kind of like, just how black is that? <laughs> and um, so, over time, he really began to like get a hold of, there's something that everybody else seems to be okay with. But Cheryl found it very difficult to trust him. Anybody? Anybody get that? Yeah. Looking at the lady. Yeah? Yeah? Amen? Yeah, amen? Yeah. Yeah. So I said, well, you know, the man's not that sophisticated. He's just like emotional intelligence level pretty low. I don't know that he... She's like, no, I need a sign. I need him to somehow let me know that he's welcoming me and not just my kid. So I, I didn't know what that would look like, but we were at a family gathering. Uh, my sister and her family were over. Literally, everybody was fine with our life except for him. And I was in the dining room, fixing the table. I can remember this vividly. Cheryl's in the kitchen with her back to me. She was at the kitchen sink. And my father wanders into the kitchen and just sort of strolls up behind her. Doesn't really even look at her. And he says, um, you can call me Bernie, or you can call me Papa. Don't call me Mr. Caps anymore. And then he kept walking. And, and she turned around, and we met my met eyes, and we were like, SCORE! <laughs> I mean, for that man to move that far was miraculous. So the end of the story is my father totally welcomed my wife and my kids. He was also in a place in his life where he had gotten cancer, he had retired, and he understood what was most important and could give up a lot of what was getting in the way. So what I didn't mention is my father grew up in Virginia uh, in the 1920s and 30s. And I don't think that he disliked or disrespected black people, but he came from a life where black people and white people were just separate. Like that just wasn't done. He didn't understand how that would work. My mother grew up in an orphanage. Her mother was alive, but was unable to take care of her and her brothers. So they were in an orphanage, and the only person in that orphanage who showed her any affection was Miss Susie, who was the cook. And we all know what color she was. So my mother never associated blackness with difference. She associated it with love and care. And I, as a product, am, am both. I am both my parents, as we are all both. And so we all own Black History Month. Amen. Amen.